Throughout the history of the NBA, there's been a number of guys who have been suspended by the NBA for violating various rules. One of those persons is OJ Mayo, a guy who averaged 18.5 points in his rookie year, a guy who famously challenged Michael Jordan while he was in high school, a guy who averaged double digit points in his first 7 seasons in the NBA. Now, at just 33 years of age, he's been out of the NBA for 5 seasons. Hey guys, hope you're doing well. This is Purple Prince and today we're gonna look at what happened to OJ Mayo. Back in 2006, OJ Mayo attended Michael Jordan's camp. He was the only high schooler in that camp amongst other college players. OJ Mayo got some buckets on MJ and started trash talking the GOAT. It didn't turn out so well for Mayo when Jordan told everyone to leave the gym. Now it was just him and Mayo. It was a time for a lesson. Already a few years into his retirement, he dominated Mayo on every aspect of the game, hitting his famous fadeaways, defending him and embarrassing him in a one-on-one -on -one pickup game. OJ Mayo didn't score a bucket and Jordan famously said, You may be the greatest high school player, but I'm the greatest ever. Don't you ever disrespect the great. A great lesson for a young kid who had that mentality that he's the best. And to be honest, he really might have been the best high school player at the time. Mayo started playing for his high school team in the 7th grade. In the 8th grade, when he was just 15 years old, he averaged 27 points per game playing against bigger kids. Mayo was selected as Ohio Mr. Basketball two times and was considered a lock to make the leap straight from high school to the NBA. Back then though, it wasn't allowed. The players had to be at least a year out of high school to enter the NBA, so Mayo went to the University of Southern California. While waiting for the college season to begin, he was playing pickup basketball at UCLA's men's gym against some great NBA players like Kobe Bryant, Kevin Garnett and Jason Kidd. Those should have been some great practice sessions. In his first and what turned out to be his only college year, OJ Mayo averaged 20.7 points and 4.5 rebounds per game. After one season of college basketball, he entered the 2008 NBA Draft. OJ Mayo was drafted with the third pick by the Minnesota Timberwolves, but later that day was traded to the Memphis Grizzlies. His very first NBA game was ineffective to say the least. Mayo scored 10 points on 5 of 20 shooting and 0 for 7 from the 3. After that, he started to adjust to the NBA level and actually scored in double digits in the first 25 games of his career. In total, Mayo finished his rookie season averaging 18.5 points and 3.2 assists as the team's starting shooting guard. He made the NBA's all-rookie first team and finished as a runner-up to Derrick Rose in Rookie of the Year voting. Mayo was a starter in his second year as well and he continued to impress. Problems started when he was late for a game game shoot-around in 2010. He was subsequently taken out of the starting lineup and from that point on, he was the Grizzlies' sixth man. It didn't get any better with time. Mayo was involved in a fight with his teammate Tony Allen and on January 27, 2011, he was suspended for 10 games for violating the NBA's anti-drug program. Now he was just reserve. And in the shortened 2011-2012 season, he didn't start a game for the Grizzlies despite playing in all 66 games. After 4 years with the Grizzlies, Mayo signed a 2-year contract with the Dallas Mavericks. He kinda revived his career in Dallas scoring the ball a bunch in the first part of the season. He tied his career high of 40 points and set a new career high in assists, but with the return of Dirk Nowitzki to the lineup, his performance dipped. After the season, Mayo declined his player option, became a free agent and signed a 3-year $24 million contract with the Milwaukee Bucks. The whole debut season for the Bucks was kinda underwhelming. He averaged just 11.7 points on 40.7% shooting from the field. During the season, he had some problems with conditioning and in the end played in just 52 games. His second season there was kinda the same statistically, but in his final season in Milwaukee, he struggled with injuries, ended up playing in just 41 games and averaged a career low 7.8 points per game. OJ Mayo's NBA career was in a bad spot. It got even worse when it was announced on July 1, 2016 that he is banned from the NBA for violating the NBA's substance abuse policy and will be eligible for a reinstatement before the start of the 2018-19 NBA season. He didn't come back to the NBA. Instead, he signed with the Puerto Rican club Atleticos de San Germán 
and after averaging 13.4 points on just 39% shooting, he was released from his contract three months later. His basketball journey continued in Taiwan, where he signed with the Dassin Tigers. In Taiwan, he averaged 22.7 points and 7.3 rebounds. Soon after the end of basketball season in Taiwan, Mayo went to the second tier league in China to play for the Hunan Yongshan Basketball Club. He stayed in Asia also for the 2019-20 season. He played for the Taipei Fuban Brave in the Asian Basketball League. In the summer of 2020, Mayo signed with the Lioning Flying Leopards in the Chinese Basketball Association, where he's currently setting his career highs across the board. Just a month into his CBA career, Mayo already won the CBA Player of the Month award in July. In over 15 regular season games, he averaged 28.4 points and shot 57% from the field and 43.5% from the three. So he has sort of revived his basketball career in China. As of now, OJ Mayo is still a member of the Flying Leopards where he is actually playing together with another former NBA player, Jonathan Simmons. In the 2020-21 CBA season, OJ Mayo is averaging 20.5 points on 52.2% shooting from the field. He's also one of the league's best 3-point shooters. If OJ Mayo never comes back to the NBA, he will finish his NBA career with 547 games played, an average of 30.9 minutes, 13.8 points, 3.1 rebounds and 2.9 assists per game on 42.9% shooting from the field and 37.3% from the three-point line. Like many other former NBA players, it seems he's found a basketball home in China, for now. It is unclear whether he could ever return to the NBA. He's getting up there in age and it's unclear what type of role he could play back in North America. There, in China, he's one of the leaders of his team and seems like he's good with it. But what do you think, guys? Could OJ Mayo ever return back to the NBA? Could you see him as the sixth man, a deep bench option or maybe even a starter? Please leave your comment down below. Don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel and enable bell notifications to not miss any content coming your way. Thanks for watching. This is Purple Prince and I'm out.